good evening to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. With you is Reverend Jude Avata of the Catholic Diocese of Worry, here with you again on the segment Living with Christ. And today we're going to be talking about divine mercy. Just for Sunday here, the Universal Church celebrated the Feast of Divine Mercy. And then you may want to ask the question, what is mercy? What is it that the church is celebrating? What is this thing about divine mercy that the church is celebrating and wants the whole world to join us to celebrate? Now, here's the message of divine mercy. It is simply the fact that God, our Almighty Father, is merciful. And then we who are beneficiary of this mercy, we ought to show mercy to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters. And then, thirdly, we ought to trust in this mercy of God. How do we know that God is merciful? What are the symptoms? What are the signs, the visible signs that we see? And then we tell ourselves that, yes, God is merciful. Apart from the, apart from the, the good things around the world, what can we visibly touch or see and say God is merciful? First, I'll tell you, it is the Bible, the Word of God, the Scripture. What is the best way we can summarize, the best way in which we can summarize the Bible? It's simply the fact that God is merciful. Although some persons will tell you love, but love and mercy, they are the same thing. And so the Bible can simply be summarized with just these few words, that God is merciful. And all over the scripture, we find God showing his mercy, his love to humanity. Particularly, in the Old Testament, it tells us of the falling of man, the fall of man. And after fall of man, our God has longed to bring man back, to restore man to his dignity. Hence, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world. And then, he didn't just come. He come and live among us. And then he, those who were sick, he, those who came to him with various diseases, begged those who were hungry. And then what did he do? At the end of his life, he offered his life for us. He offered his life for the whole of humanity in order for humanity to have, in order to show humanity mercy, in order to show humanity his forgiveness, in order to restore the dignity of humanity, the dignity of man that was lost due to sin. All this is the work of mercy. And all this manifests to us the mercy of God. And all this we find in the scripture. Particularly also outside the scripture. What do we see in the church that reminds us of the mercy of God? Or that tells us about the mercy of God? The sacraments. These are gifts of mercy. Particularly the sacrament of reconciliation and the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. These are gifts of his mercy to a church. In John, in the John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 23, when Jesus, after his resurrection, appeared to the disciples, he greeted them, peace be with you. And after that, he told them, who sings you retain, they are retained. And who sings you forgive, they are forgiven. That is what the church celebrates, the mercy. Of God. Again, in Psalm 118, the Psalm, the whole of the Psalm tells us about the mercy of God, that the mercy of God endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And so our God is merciful. The, the, the scripture tells us about his mercy. And then in the church, it gives us the gifts of the sacrament, anointing of the sick, and then the sacrament of reconciliation, the gifts of mercy. Time after time, you hear people going to the confession and then they come back and they tell you, I feel lighter. That is God's mercy. You hear people who are sick call on the priest for anointing and then they are anointed. And after they have been anointed, after two or three days, they call the priest and they say, I'm feeling better. Thanks for coming. That is God's mercy. Now, having known that God is merciful, and having known that we as humans are beneficiary of this mercy, 
what are we to do? We are called to spread and to show this mercy to others. We are called to make this mercy visible, to incarnate this mercy in the life of our brothers and sisters in the world. Particularly, the church has made it easy for all of us to make this works, this mercy of God, to express it and to make it visible in the life of others. The church has made it so easy for us by giving us the corporal and the spiritual works of mercy. And here's what Mother Teresa tells us about the works of mercy. He said, when we're going to be judged, we're not going to be judged on the degrees we have. No. We are not going to be judged on the amount we have in our account. No. We are not going to be judged on the, on the many big things we have achieved in life. No. When we're going to be judged, we're going to be judged in this way. When I was sick, did you visit me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was hungry, did you give me food? When I was thirsty, did you give me drink? When I was homeless, did you shelter me? In this, we're going to be judged. And so we are called to show mercy to others, to provide shelter for others, to clothe those around us who are naked, to provide drink for those who are thirsty, to, pro- to give food to those who are hungry. More than ever in our world today, there are so many persons who are in need of mercy. There are so many persons who are suffering because of the wickedness of man. There are so many persons who are undergoing a lot. They need a smile. They need an embrace. They need a handshake. All of this is expressing God's mercy to wounded humanity. Thirdly, having expressed this mercy of God to others, we must trust in God's mercy. It is one thing for the mercy to be there. Of course, God's mercy, as Psalm 118 tells us, endures forever. The mercy is there, but it's another thing to trust in that mercy. We are called to trust and put our trust in the divine mercy of God. Are there still people who feel they can't trust in God's mercy? Are there still people who feel due to their sins which they've committed, they cannot be forgiven? Are there still people who feel they are back away from, who still run away from God because of the guilt they've committed? Are there still people who shy away from the sacrament of reconciliation. Are there still people who shy away from the sacrament of anointing of the sick, feeling that, oh, because of my sins, I can't be forgiven? No. There is no sin that the mercy of God cannot wipe away. There is no sin that the mercy of God cannot wash away. There is no sin that is greater than the mercy of God. God is merciful, and he wants us to trust in his mercy. He wants us to approach him in his sacraments and find mercy. Today, the church is calling you. God is calling you. He's inviting you to let go of that sin and turn to him, for he's full of mercy and compassion. Before I leave you, I would like to take you through the Mass. At the Mass, we celebrate the mercy of God. And you ask me how. Ask that, what really happens at the Mass? At the beginning of the Mass, we tell God, oh, we're sorry for our sins. And then what does, what does he do? He, have, he grants us his compassion. We tell him, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And then the priest tells us, May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. That is God's mercy. And then what happens after that? At the Lamb of God, what happens? We tell God, who is the Lamb of God, to take away our sins. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. That is the mercy of God. And all through the various Eucharistic prayers, Eucharistic prayer 1, Eucharistic prayer uh, 2, 3, 4, we find various expressions about the mercy of God. And then finally, after the Mass, when the priest dismisses all to go, he says the words, go in peace. That is God's mercy. And so on this day we pray that God gives us his grace to always, always trust in his mercy. And in trusting in his mercy, that we too would may be able to extend to others his mercy. That we may be able to sprinkle his mercy to others. We may be able to sprinkle his mercy in a world that is devoid of mercy. God bless you.